I visit Esper and I make videos on YouTube for those who like to challenge mindset and make a difference in the workplace. Today I'm talking about the difference between data architecture, data management and data governance. When I explain and compare multiple concepts, I like to frame them and explain the context before jumping into the content and details. First, it helps to understand the role and purpose of architecture versus management versus governance. Imagine a large office building with many people working within it. Data architecture would describe the building itself and the structure of the building, such as building plans. Data management would describe the management of the people working within the building and data governance would describe the rules for changing the building plans or how people are managed. In a similar way, data architecture defines a structure for the data. Data management stores and manages the data within that structure. And data governance provides the rules for changing the data structure or the data. Because governance also controls the data structure, a more appropriate model is a Venn diagram. The Venn diagram is used to create a framework with core dimensions that describe the difference between data architecture, management and governance. We will populate the framework as we go, explaining the detail, but always in the context of the whole picture. Let's understand the framework before populating it. The first dimension describes the scope. The second dimension is the definition, which describes what it is and why it is important. The third dimension describes the goal and measure of success. The fourth dimension describes how control and conformance are exercised. The fifth dimension lists typical roles and the sixth and final dimension lists typical tools used. Let's unpack the framework starting with data architecture. The scope of data architecture is to increase the quality of the data structure to connect data and data sources, which enables data management and data governance. Data diversity describes data architecture as the models and artifacts that connect a business strategy and data strategy with its technical execution. Data architecture provides a foundation for people and systems to work with data most efficiently. Data architecture is as much a business decision as it is a technical one, as new business models and entirely new ways of working are driven by data and information. The goal is to optimally structure data and how it moves into the business, out of the business and within the business, so it can be related and connected, stored and secured. Data architecture controlled through principles which are based on best practice and are recommendations and guidelines rather than rules. It is possible to always have other controls like policies, but if all three data domains work well together, principles are the natural controls for data architecture, whereas policies are the natural controls for data governance, which we will cover later. A principle could be ensure single source of truth and avoid data duplication and movement. And it could have two sub-principles. View data as a shared asset and prevent formation of departmental data silos. And the second sub-principle could be everyone should operate from the same single version of the data. Another example of the principle could be strive for consistency with the sub-principle of use a common data vocabulary for all collaboration regardless of the application or business function. And the third overall principle could be data democratization with two example sub-principles, the first one being put the right data into the hand of the right user at the right time. And the second sub-principle base all opinions on data. 
other roles that are often involved in data architecture other than the data architect includes the data modeler, who specializes in developing and managing logical data models and their connections. The database administrator, who specializes in building and managing physical data model and databases. The data analyst, who sits the architect and the modeler, and the BA analysts who typically look at data specifically for reporting and analytics purposes. Some of the important tools for the data architect includes the logical data model, which shows data entities and their relationships to other data entities. I have made a video on data modeling and normalization, and I put a link in the description below the video. The data dictionary, which stores the attributes that define the entity and the attributes that defines the entity's relationships. The data flow diagram that shows how data and processes interact. The CRUD diagram connects entities, attributes and processes and shows how processes and functions either view create, update, or delete data. The ETL diagram shows how data is transformed between data sources, where ETL stands for Extract, Transform, Load. And finally, the API diagram, which shows how data flows between applications. We now have enough information to complete the framework for data architecture. Next, let's unpack data management. The purpose of data management is to increase the quality of data in the data structure. Gartner defines data management as practices, architectural techniques, and tools for achieving consistent access to and delivery of data across the enterprise. The goal is to optimally store data to make it secure, available, and accessible to everyone who needs it. Data management controls primarily through patterns, which are proven ways of design. Here are some examples of data management patterns. Decompose by business capability, used to map services directly to business capabilities. Shared database, used when services access mainly shared data and when scale is not required. Database per service, used when services access mainly private data and when scale is required. Some patterns have sub-patterns. For example, the database per service pattern requires several sub-patterns to operate, for example. Saga pattern, used to develop asset-like transactions across databases. Command query responsibility segregation, the CQRS pattern, used to retrieve data from multiple services and the domain event pattern used to publish an event each time a service updates its data. The key data management role is a database administrator who's often supported by the database designer who specializes in designing relational and non-relational databases. The data modeler, the data analyst, and the BI analyst. Some of the important tools include the physical data model, which shows data tables and their relationships to other data tables. The data dictionary, which stores the columns that defines tables and the columns that defines the tables relationships. The data flow diagram, which shows how data and processes interact. The CRUD diagram connects tables, columns, and processes and shows how functions and processes view, create, update, and delete data. Note that the logical CRUD developed previously is extended to also show the physical data mapping. And finally, relational and non-relational databases. We now have enough information to complete the framework for data management. And lastly, let's unpack data governance. 
The purpose of data governance is to establish policies and procedures for increasing quality of data structure and data. I should point out that traditional data governance focus on data, not data structure, but I don't believe the two can be separated. The Data Governance Institute defines data governance as a system of decision rights and accountabilities for information-related processes executed according to agreed-upon models which describe who can take what actions with what information and when, under what circumstances, using what methods. Quite a mouthful. The goal is to increase data quality through policies and procedures to meet desired business goals and outcomes. Like data architecture, data governance also needs to be business driven. Data governance controls primarily through the use of policies, and here are some examples. Access and usage policy, used to determine who has access to what data and how data is used. Storage and retention policy, used to determine how long certain types of documents need to be stored. Data governance roles are made up of both business and technical people. And some examples are data owner, who is typically a senior business leader in charge of a function or a domain such as the head of sales. Data steward, who typically works for a data owner and who makes day-to-day -day data decisions, and data architect and the data analyst. Some of the important tools include the data dictionary, the data catalog, which contains a common set of language and definition for important or cross-functional data. Data lineage shows where data came from, transformations along the way, and where the data is going. The framework is now complete and I hope I have been able to explain the differences between data architecture, management and governance. And if you like this video, please click the like and the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care until then.